Between 2009 and 2018, how many school shootings did the United States have? 288. 288. Now let's look globally. Our G7 partners, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the United Kingdom, combined, how many did those countries, how many school shootings did those countries have? Five. Five. Five times more. In 10, almost 10 years. 288 versus five. This is not normal. Not only is it not normal, it is internationally embarrassing and delegitimizing to the United States. Because for all the billions and trillions that this body authorizes in the name of national security, we can't even keep our kids safe from their schools being turned into a war zone. Now let's talk about why. Let's talk about one thing more important to lobbyists and the gun industry than children, than houses of faith, than human beings. Let's talk about profit. Mr. Suplina, in 2020, 22.8 million guns were sold, reflecting a 64% increase from 2019, correct? Correct. In one year. And across the board, gun manufacturers and ammunition companies began to see record profits. Is that right? That's correct. Now let's put into that into context. In 2020, again, more than 45,000 Americans died by gunfire, reflecting an almost three-fold increase from 2015. Are those statistics correct? That's accurate. So in your view, are you seeing a correlation between gun profits and gun deaths in the United States? Yes. This is about blood money. Between 2019 and 2021, two years, leading gun manufacturer Sturm and Ruger saw gross profits double to almost $280 million. In fact, during an earnings call, their CEO called the sales boom, quote, historic, ferocious, and that the future was bright. A month after that, an AR-556 pistol murdered 10 people at a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado. Those profit margins, $280 million, went go to lobbying. Is that correct? Much of that goes to lobbying, correct? Significant amounts go to lobbying, correct. And can you remind us what the gun industry is lobbying against when it deploys these uh, lobbying resources? They are lobbying against <clears throat> every law that would regulate firearms, period. And can you uh, briefly tell us how gun companies have poured extra profits directly into lobbying against gun reform? And as an advocate in this space, uh, what have you seen? Just name, rattle off some of the measures that they have, just a few that they have uh, lobbied against? Lobbied against, they've lobbied against background checks which uh, on all gun sales, which would in fact, as was mentioned earlier, allow for the would-be criminal to obtain a firearm from a law-abiding citizen without a background check. The criminal would be breaking the law, but we could stop that. They've lobbied against red flag laws, which would temporarily deprive after due process uh, firearm from somebody who opposes a threat to themselves or others. That is a court adjudication. For context, the NRA spent about $250 million in 2020 alone. That's more than twice the entire salary of Congress combined. In one year, lobbying against gun safety laws. There's also this discussion about anything but a gun, but that these are about violent people but yet we aren't doing anything about addressing the actual root causes of misogyny where two thirds of mass shootings are connected to domestic violence or the emergence of white supremacy radicalization, mass incarceration and poverty and the connections between that and uh, mass shootings in our communities.